find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Did you hear about that new band? Their name is 1023 Megabytes. They haven't got a gig yet. Time to get awesome. It's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for your awesome cast live from Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, where you talk about the latest technology news uh, on this date. With me back in the studio, fresh off of his vacation. So fresh off his vacation, he's only got like 24 hours in on Windows 10. I, this is the first time he's had less experience on a new thing than me. Uh, it's John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How's it going? Yeah, I, I even still have my sandals on. I, it's like I walked right off the beach into Sorgatron Studios. Did you go to work today? <laughs> yeah, I went to work. Awesome. <laughs> How you doing? Not too bad. It's good to be back. You're Got gonna, some new toys. You're going to give us a vacation tech report? Actually, vacation was very non-tech. Oh, you um, detached? Nice. I kind of detached, and um, Wi-Fi was an issue in the in the hotel we were staying in. Oh, jeez. I was getting like fifty six k speed. Yeah. So doing anything oh. like a Windows ten upgrade was was not a viable option. To the point where um, we were trying to stream PBS Kids for mm -hmm. Christopher, mm -hmm. and I was like, Christopher was actually handing me the phone back like it was broken. <laughs> so so we ended up having to tether his wi-fi only phone to my phone for for some videos and whatnot so I'm, I'm interested to see what my data cap looks like thank thankfully for at&t rollover data um i didn't use a lot of data last month so i have 17 gig on my ro on my rollover right nice. now so I, nice. I, I i shouldn't have to pay anything extra but there were there was a lot of streaming going on so i mean is this is this like kind of the first experience where your kid was like not around internet not fit fast internet yeah 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 like the 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 app like buffers and at home i would say it probably takes a good two two seconds to buffer yeah on vacation it was like 20 seconds and it's just like a swirly arrow type thing and mm. he was he he can't comprehend english so <laughs> oh, no. well he can but he doesn't he doesn't understand slow internet he's just not at that point <laughs> yeah wow all right. So it was it was trial and trials and tribulations for him. Wow. All right. And also with us, we got a first timer here on the awesome cast, which you I get guessed in the most random way. So like just so random eh, I should be on awesome cast. Yeah, yeah. What you doing Tuesday? Yeah, what, what's going on? I you know, I, I don't I, I don't want to bother people with my little podcast somewhere, and I forget to invite new people. Uh, but I, you know him as at Pantster. Make sure you spell that right. He's not the Asian lady if you misspelled it. Uh, Chris, how you doing? Whoop, wrong one. That's not him. That's not him. There he is. There he is. Yeah, there I am. You're not the show I'm knows. Doing, I'm doing pretty good. Actually, he, uh, John just got back, and I'm going on vacation. Nice. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll, we'll report on our tech when we get back, but uh, we're going to some place with actually the best Wi-Fi I'd ever experienced traveling, and that's Disney. Oh, it was oh. just fantastic down there. Oh, they'd have to, wouldn't they? Wow. Yeah. All right. But like I said, this is the awesome cast. We're talking tech. We're having fun. Uh, we're talking social media, everything else going on. Uh, thank you, Chris Bomberger, for uh, for joining us here this week. And uh, you can uh, join us as well. We're here live.awesomecast.net around 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. We're getting on. You can see us talking about stuff. We're kind of having some side conversations about Windows 10 and how we've been doing and, and getting prepped and everything. You're just kicking off by 7 p.m. Uh, you can also please go to awesomecast.net and uh, subscribe on the YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, wherever you want to listen or watch us we are all over the place even got a few clips over on daily motion uh and, and and please do that and share it if you like anything we're talking about you have somebody that's digging on a conversation that we might be having please share that on your twitters on your social media on your facebook as well and help grow the audience and you can follow us at awesome cast on the twitter you can find us also on uh, facebook and google plus and we do have a facebook group there's a little bit of conversation going on there we're tweeting out stories all week long so you kind of get an idea when maybe what we're looking 
looking at for this next week or suggest stuff for us to talk about. It's not just what's what's catching our attention, maybe what you're catching your attention out there as well. So I know we've been getting a lot of comments on you guys about Windows 10, and you know we're going to get to that eventually here, of course. Uh, you can also please support the show, patreon.com slash awesomecast. We've had a, a few weeks here. We've had a, a great patron. 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 I, I keep wanting to Transformers eyes this entire thing um with patreon but uh thank you to thistle c business development they've been uh, on our side here for the uh, last three weeks and uh thank you so much for supporting this show and i've had I, i've been able to record the very first state of the awesome cast if you want to know what's going on and some of the ideas and some of these other shows we've been thinking of on the side as we have our lunches and and uh, uh think about growing the network and i don't know where i'll find the time to do that but we'll do that anyways uh you can uh, uh become a patron subscriber uh, um, and uh, supporter and uh, and be our boss. We're looking for uh, input from you. And that definitely carries a bit more rate. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. All right, we'll hold off Chillis for last because I have a feeling that's going to go for a little bit. It's going to go for a little bit and it's going to lead into the 10 topic, I think. Uh, oh, yeah? <laughs> going. I figure it's going to just end up being the 10 topic. <laughs> Oh, we just have to take a break to, to talk about our wonderful sponsor, Slice on Broadway, uh, in the middle of that. So so this is something, uh, my awesome thing of the week is nothing new. Uh, I believe we've even talked about it here on the show. But this was actually brought up on This Week in Google uh, this past week. And it's called Karma. Now, uh, you know, I've always been interested in these kind of uh, uh, interesting other hotspot ideas uh, going around. This one's kind of cool that, uh, so you pay for this, it's about 150 bucks to get the device, right? And I think it's running on Sprint, you know, one of those MVNO ones. Mm -hmm. And I think they're actually working to get a little bit more, uh, a, a few more providers. But it's nothing weird like WiMAX, like uh, Freedom Pop was at that point. And that was my issue before, was, was with WiMAX. Mm -hmm. Like I was running off the Sprint network and the speed was... I I still have a WiMAX dongle in my in my bag, but the nice thing with Freedom Pop, I just plug that thing in and I'm going, mm -hmm. and I'm paying for it. So it's like I I have this emergency Wi-Fi, as long as I'm somewhere that has WiMAX Sprint, which uh, that's probably going away at some point, isn't it? Oh, I'm so, sure. Yeah. So I mean, that's kind of an old tech. But anyways, you pick this thing up, you pay. You know, it's again kind of like Ting, where um you only pay for what you what you got. Like Jeff Jarvis on, on Twig was saying, like he paid for a hundred gigabytes. Or something like that. Or he paid a hundred dollars, something like that. And it's just something that's in his in his bag, and he uses it whenever. That was my problem with this thing with Verizon. I actually let this go, and and I'm got a cancellation fee. I'm going to have to pay here. Uh, but I let this go because I was paying fifty bucks a month, and I wasn't using it. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're just like you're like paying a tax to have this thing. Whereas you know this, you know, obviously you pay pay up front for the device, but hundred fifty bucks that's not bad for something like this, right? And uh, so here's the interesting part. So when you have this thing and you're using it, uh, it has a public side of it too. So I'm in an airport. I find this Karma Wi-Fi spot. I click on it. Uh, I believe it makes you create an account, and then you can use it. Now, if you happen to be somewhere and somebody uses it for, for so much uh, time or whatever the case may be, now you get so many, you know, so many gigabytes so many megabytes for for that so that's the karma part of it so you're actually building that up for sharing people and again you know it's kind of a interesting scheme because now that person has an account and maybe you know they'll probably be bugged to to you'll know, be bugged to get a a, a a karma as well and it kind of spreads out from there um but uh, a really interesting kind of sharing internet concept uh you can check it out at yourkarma.com and like i said the device itself uh, double check that to be sure, sure. It is uh, 150 bucks, and there it is, just a little thing, just a little thing. Nationwide LTE, no monthly fees or contracts. Buy it as you go. Then the data itself never expires. Which even if you're on like one of those lower ones, like a track phone or something, those things always expire, and uh, and you always have to pick up new ones. So it's it's uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. so and, and for 99 bucks you can get 10 gig. Right, right, so right, you right, get, right. Like right. a little price price break. One yeah. one gig for 14, five gig for for 60. 59 10 gig for 99 i think the most important thing though is the whole it never expires like you could keep that just in your bag right as long as you have something to charge it off of right you need a little data i would even look at this like if i was getting poor data signal on my regular carrier could i use this to supplement 
Yeah, and and would I get better signal out of out of whatever they're running off of? Mm -hmm. They actually do have a, a a coverage map, and actually it looks pretty decent here for the Pittsburgh area. So wow, it's all so. Great. Do, do, do other people do you? Is that charged against your data? If other people use it, no, I, yeah. I don't believe so. They, that's like free data for them. But since, you know, they've kind of found you and, you know, again, it's kind of and, and you get rewarded for it, basically. So it, it, you're, you're kind of become this kind of agent to of discovery for 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 people to, you know, get new accounts and then kind of get into the ecosystem. Do they pay for it? Uh, I don't think so. So I'm going to go on the loophole here. Mm -hmm. So I buy it. I turn it on. I share it and then i use another device to log into it and use the free side of it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't i don't know if, the, if, if it gets it that far into it wow i didn't think you know about what i mean one. yeah 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 so so uh, yeah now well, I, I think it's one of those like you have to make the account so, and I don't know what the limitations are. On, on, are are on you that saying no one it. in the world has more than one email account? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's crazy talk. <laughs> Who would have two? Nobody needs two email accounts. No, no, absolutely not. So, no, I, I don't know how it works that way. But now, now I want one of these. <laughs> so you're going to hack away at it. <laughs> Get free data. <laughs> well, because that's, that's actually what got me started on these types of devices to begin with. Was at work, we had no Wi-Fi and our, our internet's very limited and locked down. So there was this thing that was called the iSpot, mm -hmm. and the iSpot ran off of the WiMAX network, and which was horrible. But it was it, the device was a hundred bucks. It was twenty dollars a month, but unlimited data, and up to eight devices. Mm -hmm. And you you locked in. It, what, whenever you ordered it, you locked in your price for as long as you were going to keep it. Um, I mean, I was probably getting like 115 to like two fifty six k modems bound together and speed but that's better than no speed at all um the other thing that was funny about it was it was called the iSpot because it was meant only for ios devices but through a firmware hack you could relinquish it and it would open up for anything hmm. um i later canceled it just because when at&t did the 10 gig family share plan um there was really uh, there's very little chance that I'll go over that by myself. Um, and since then, we've gotten minimal Wi-Fi at work. So but a device like this, I do definitely find handy. Mm -hmm. Certainly. I, 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 I do love that. Like, it's you know, you, it's, it's actually funny because they were talking about this last week. And I knew that this was the line on this before, but I actually see nothing about that, that, that guest login that they used to talk about on here uh, on the website. So. Um, but there is a referral program, so I wonder if that's it. Maybe you do log in, create an account. Um, but I do like that it is like they say, life is you know, it's like a gas tank. You fill it up as you go, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that's a, a a different way to look at the internet. You know, I'm paying for how much data you get. Those rollovers, like we were just talking about with AT and T, um, I'm getting. I mean, I'm getting a pretty good amount of rollover <laughs> uh, because <laughs> I got onto that 30 gigabyte plan and now it just doesn't make sense to knock down the next tier because it drops all the way down to 10 yeah um and we are definitely using it at this point um so but but still that expires after the next month yes you get a buffer but it only lasts a month it's not like rollovers used to be on at&t and singular where it lasts for like six months a year or something like that if those 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 minutes are sitting there which is, you know, a little more tapered, I feel. So there's no way for you to go above 60 gig. Basically. Basically. But really. But, yeah. I mean, but, yeah, but, <laughs> but, but really, you know. <laughs> but no, let's be serious. At that point, I mean, I don't know. I, I am thinking about, because something went bad at Tunesium last year for Chachi Plays, and I actually pulled the, the Verizon MiFi out mm -hmm. and streamed for a while on that. Oh, man, I had overage charges. Because I only had four <laughs> gig, I only had a four gig plan on here. And, uh, and I'm just like, well, I got to stream this thing. And we put it out there. So I don't know. I don't know. See, to me, a device like that, like the Karma, is perfect for vacations. And we were just talking about the vacations. Or just like the occasional traveler. Because a lot of times you get stuck someplace mm -hmm. and you just don't have anything. Like you want to use a, just a regular iPad. And now you can 
if you have something like the Karma, you can fire it up and go with it, with, with it never expiring. You know, you don't have to worry about having it like having to pay a monthly fee just in case. Oh, did you I? Have, oh, did I prep this thing before I left? Did I get an account? Like, do I, oh, and I, I got to get on the internet to turn this thing on. Yeah, yeah, you're you're good to go, right? Yeah, that's it exactly. So I find it interesting that their website lets you order nine up to nine at a time. <laughs> <laughs> but it but it oh well, oops now i don't want to order nine karmas congratulations oh. on your purchase <laughs> hello owner of nine karmas john chinchilla uh, you sell them on the street corner there you go <laughs> what's a karma got you karma. Karma here. right here downtown pittsburgh let's get it comes with 10 gig of data <laughs> yep 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 uh chris panzer what's your awesome thing of the week uh, my awesome thing of the week is I don't have the clip ready, but it was the definitely the the trailer for Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, and I don't like. I'm not a super game guy, but I I, I would start lining up now with hundred dollar bills in my hand, <laughs> saying, "Just please take my money and mm-hmm. give me that game at any cost." Mm-hmm. It looked fantastic to me. It was just an amazing. It, it, it just looked like it was part of the movie rather than, wow. you know, a game. It was fantastic. And the thing that really took it over the edge for me was uh, this week they debuted the Starfighter mode. So they had the full uh, game video, a game recorded video of flying an X-Wing fighter and blowing up TIE fighters. And, you know, for people of a certain age, there is nothing better <laughs> than that in the world. Let's see. I still, I still remember the old DOS Tie Fighter game that was just like really kind of horrible, and I was lost the entire time. But it was still, I'm in a Tie Fighter. This is amazing, right? <laughs> I mean, actually, even going further back than that, the first video game, like stand-up video game, I think I ever played, was an old vector graphic X-wing fighter game. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sure you guys have seen them somewhere along the line. They actually but have, uh, they have a couple of those at the uh, Coin Op, Pennsylvania Coin Op Hall of Fame. Uh, oh, we got to play them recently, and that's actually the first time I got to play the art. Like I have the um, like the Sega 32X version of it, <laughs> <laughs> and I've played it on like emulators. Uh, but yeah, they have that, and they have Empire Strikes Back. I think they actually even have a sit down Empire Strikes Back. I wasn't working at the time though, so uh, you might want to check that out. I, I think I would. Yeah, but the thing about the, about a trailer, it, it's interesting that that a game alone, mm-hmm. uh, I, I would I would never you know, spend $400 on a laptop to play a game. But for whatever reason, I would certainly do that for a console. I, yeah, I don't have a PS4, but I'm, I guess, hey, I'm going to buy one just so I can play that. Wow. Just so I can feel like a Jedi for a few minutes. Because <laughs> this is, I mean, we've had games where, again, like the, that were X-Wing fighters. We've had games that were, you were a Jedi. We had games where you did this, and it was always one little chunk of that universe but battlefront seems to be no we're just going to do the battles we're going to do the big stuff but we're going to do every version of it and this isn't the first battlefront game of course i think there's been two of them so far and uh but yeah this is definitely what this is this is certainly that new technology finally kind of coming coming of age right because i know I, I i've looked at games and said is it really worth an extra 400 bucks to get the next xbox for me not really i'm enjoying tomb raider uh the, the, the last tomb raider game right now I, I i just got through bioshock infinite you know i mean there, there's a lot to it i don't see that advantage until you see a game like this that isn't going to come to your current last gen console and you're like oh okay you got me right yeah and the other thing about it is the other features of xboxes and ps4s are kind of ubiquitous now like almost my rtv all has uh you know netflix and amazon and hulu all built in mm-hmm. uh you know we, all of our tvs have a dvr attached to them uh, it's really just the games now, uh, you know, that there's no reason to get them to attach them to anything else for other than games, at least right. for us. And uh, so the games have to be really good. And the amount of money that they spend on making these games and just how beautiful they look, uh, you know, I think they really have to focus on, you know, making them a fantastic playing experience, especially a long term playing experience. I don't want to play something for 60 hours. And then be done with it, you know, with a with a good online, you know, multiplayer, fantastic. It it kind of makes it, you know, the the device 
going back away from a, a general appliance mm-hmm. to a really a gaming console. See, that's that's where um, I, I'm never on the cutting edge when it comes to the games like this. I'm always getting them like later on discount on especially like Steam, for instance. <laughs> so sitting there and spending 20 hours and blowing through Bioshock, like, look, I'm good. And that's but I got my bit through it, you know, and, and see, that drives me nuts, though, because I feel like. It's almost like they designed the game for that experience that, oh, we know someone sooner or later is going to buy it at the $20 price point and we'll just keep yeah. pumping it out. And, and that's the thing that I really liked the original Halo on the on the mm-hmm. on the first Xbox because the storyline was so great and, the, and it was one of the longer type games. Right now, I feel like you get a lot of those games and they're putting a minimal amount of time into the storyline, just figuring that if they build a couple really good levels and it gets good online play, yeah, then they don't really have to generate any real content. It's just some levels and, and weapons and characters and whatnot. Well, it's, Call and of Duty's like that. Call of Duty's yeah. really like that. Like, if you're not into the multiplayer, what are you playing for? Right. Because that storyline is, like, it's a good story, but it's, like, 10 hours tops. Right. It, and it's really just kind of a tutorial so you'll get a little better at the at the multiplayer. Uh, it, I, I don't think it's fair for, for a $60 price point no for, for for that i i th- like i look like the battlefronts the, the the original battlefront like i could play that for hours and hours and hours and mm-hmm. hours and it, i'm hoping this is the same way yeah and the, the one thing that, like the star wars games have or you know even like star trek or some of the other games is they kind of have a built-in imagination ecosystem mm-hmm. where you know even if there's not like a super ongoing storyline or, or, or story arc uh, everyone in probably most people in the world are familiar enough with Star Wars where you almost generate your own storylines in your head as you go play an immersive game like Battlefront. So it comes out when November 11th? I think it, no, 11th or 17th. I think it was something right along there. 17th. All right. Awesome. This is what I don't understand. The first, oh, it's, a, it's an expansion piece. Players who pre-order Star Wars Battlefront can fight the battle one week early on December 1st. All other players will get access to this free content on December 8th, but then the game is available November 17th. That windowing is always interesting to me. But again, I'm yeah. a very patient purchaser <laughs> of games. So that whole, like, I paid all this money so I, and I pre-ordered it so I can get it 24 hours earlier than everybody else. But then again, those are the people that are whooping my ass <laughs> when I got it on day one. And I'm wondering why everybody's so good and have all the upgrades already. Right? Well, and, and, and they, like, like, I know people that, oh, what was the, there was some game that I bought that got me the Halo the next halo beta mm-hmm. so i could play the beta to get good mm-hmm. and then i could then i could purchase the game later on but there's a lot of them now where you're you're buying another game just so you can get in on the beta of a different game right right well especially something like a halo series that kind of makes sense mm-hmm. right because you're gonna you're gonna roll along with that so hey so you're the you're the halo fan what should i go to next should i go ahead with halo reach or halo 4 because i seem to have acquired both of them or i'm trying to remember i would probably reach is the next in the series isn't it i can't remember i would go in the next in the series which i think is reach this is a, it's a prequel though right that's not odst no odst is like the one where it's there's no spartans yeah right 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 yeah. i gotta borrow that from my brother but anyways uh between like the games for gold that's the other thing i'm sitting on the games for gold stuff i have a lot to play when i am I so I happy about games for gold it's so amazing because i started doing I actually started turning on my Xbox every 15 days <laughs> to get games for gold. Yeah, so yeah. knowing that or hoping that one day there would be backwards compatibility, which is now coming. Mm-hmm. So now I have all these Xbox digital game xbox 360 digital games which is funny because even though i don't have an xbox one i can go on the website and purchase the xbox one games on games for gold so whenever i get my xbox one i got a buttload of stuff to play exactly and and (laughs) i'll tell you the the voice control and the stuff and and you do have to get the connect but that that to me seals the deal and i think they just announced today um 
Xbox is going to do. This might be interesting for you. So Xbox One is going to do DVR and they have a built in. They're going to they have a USB HD antenna. So if you wanted to do an in-house. No service required DVR. Wow. With all your local channels. Wow. That. You, like you, you, you could do it all off the Xbox. Okay, okay. Um, here's okay. You may wow, <laughs> because with that, um, I may buy an Xbox One and cancel Hulu. So you, yeah, because you would get two because four. that's well, maybe not no, not, four. not everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, four is the only thing I don't get, but I don't get any CBS stuff. Like Supergirl's coming on CBS uh, this fall. So that's like something I'm like, oh, I got to watch that. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Uh, I, I mean, but there is, I mean, there's other stuff. Comedy Central and, and, and WWE and stuff like that is, is on Hulu. But still, like that idea that I can just not bother with that and have a DVR just by having an Xbox kind of makes me want, like that's kind of like, no one feature makes me want to get an Xbox One. But you tell me I can do this. You tell me Battlefront's coming out for it. You tell me this is coming. You tell me I can do the backwards compa- compatibility. I'm sitting on a ton of a, a mountain of games because I've been clicking that button every 15 days on Xbox One for the games with gold. <laughs> I'm kind of you're getting me there. You know well, what I mean? The, the funny part would be, and and Kraus would be the best one to tell you this, but if you just Bing searched like five times a day. And it doesn't even have to be yeah, serious Bing I searches. Know. You know what? I got that Windows you, 10. I'm just going to open up the Edge browser <laughs> 10 to five times a day and be like, do, do, do. You could, I mean, you'd have enough. You'd probably have a, you'd have a year of Xbox Live. You'd have a year. <laughs> 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 That's worth it right there. Which gets you all those games. Yes. Jeez. And, man. and they're saying that the, the next, one of the next updates too is going to do mouse and keyboard. Wow. I think they're going to turn. I think slowly the the Xbox One. Is, I think they're going to backpedal and and move back into the. This is an enter, all in entertainment at a certain point. So with, are you telling me at a certain point? Because you, you, we already talked about it. It's going to be running Windows 10 at a certain point. Will I be able to take this Xbox? I think we pontificated on this before. Will I be able to take this Xbox, put it under my desk, attach a mouse and keyboard to it, attach an HD monitor to it, and run Office? Yes. I think that's going to be. I honestly think that's going you to think be. This a is this state. is definitely happening. I I could see it. I could certainly see it. Uh, why not? Yeah. Why? I mean, I know it's like, oh, that's not the reason I would buy it for. But but if it turns into this thing that you like, like a company buys them because they're a nice four hundred dollar computer that is powerful and can do all that kind of stuff and have a little power on the hood for for games or graphics applications. I don't know if you're doing Maya on the thing, but still, that's still pretty incredible. But anyways. And you can stream your games to your to your lap, your Windows 10 device while while someone else is watching TV. Uh, We'll touch on some of that Windows. I feel like the rest of the episode is going to be Windows 10, to be quite honest. So (laughs) let's take a moment here before we get to that. Uh, let's, uh, give a shout to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com. Uh, Chill is back. I'm sure he missed that there was no Slice, uh, mm-hmm. while he was hanging out, uh, there on no the beach. There's no Slice in Ocean City. No there's, Slice. There's nothing, there's nothing even remotely close. No, no. Did you have pizza while you were out there? I did twice. Twice. And it was not Slice. And you're like, this isn't Slice. And you threw it on the ground and you kicked I, sand in his face. Yes. And then I just just buried it. I threw it in the ocean. You threw it in the ocean? It says, <laughs> I don't need this crust. You are gone. <laughs> to the fishes. And there's a shark. Um, anyways, uh, but no, it's SliceOnBroadway.com. Uh, they've been hooking us up for well over a year here. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcast with fine pepperoni pizza. And uh, we want you guys to go check them out. If you're here in the South Hills and Beachview or you're down in Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street, please go check them out. Rico is awesome. And uh, the entire crew down there. Uh, so... Uh, uh, check them out on social media, PGH underscore slice on the Twitters, as well as uh, look for them on Facebook and the Instagram, and you will be hungry too. And then your phone will go in your mouth, and you'll be like, oh, and, uh, and, then, and, and then you'll go down the slice. Uh, so where any pizza can be a hoagie, and any hoagie can be a pizza. Why isn't that their, their, their <laughs> slogan? Is that the secret? <laughs> like, is it, do, do they not want us to know this? That is the secret, and and I I live by it, but I and I don't know why they don't do more with it. Tell yeah. them that. <laughs> Tell them that. I don't know. I, they, I know there's sometimes where they're like, well, we can do that, but it might be a little weird because the way it cooks. You know what I mean? Like like some fine. things that we've tried in the past. That's so and, and see now I'm thinking about 
<laughs> what rule, what, like what hoagie can I make that could not be turned into a pizza? Is there anything out there that would do that? Mm. I don't, not that I can think of. Tuna hoagie. No, no. With a white sauce, with an with an oil like Ooh. a garlic aioli. Oh, you could you could turn that into a pizza, oh. my friend. They made Chris. They made a Hello Kitty pizza. Yeah, they can do it all. <laughs> as in, as in, they made one shaped like Hello Kitty that really looked like a dough doll, and then they made one that was they didn't like how it turned out, so they made one that was just a design of Hello Kitty's face on the pizza. So it's always more editable. They're not. Yeah, when we came out to when I went out to your anniversary show it was the first time. I'd ever had it, and it, it, it was, lives up to the hype. It is fantastic in every way. Awesome, awesome. Go check them out, sightsonbroadway.com. And with that, please go check out, uh, here's a little bit of what happened last week on Sorgatron Media. Um, also, uh, this is also very important because I have Chachi on the show. If you go to the website uh, for Chubby Shorts, on the bright bottom right-hand side, mm-hmm. it says... Share if you hate pants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So they're just. Oh, saying, let me uh, let me go do that right now. Yeah, you're like, I love these people. We are best friends. I, I mean, they're yep. it, it's this very human aspect and very. I, I just really like their their product. And like I said, their short videos. <laughs> What's you that? know him. He you knows only be the. Why would they possibly listen to John Cena? He's only been the top guy in the company for a damn decade, Sorg. Because what, what they don't give creative control. Because why they don't you, give creative control in their me? contracts why is anymore. Talk to the man. Talk to the man over I there. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. He Sorg. feels he can't reason with. They don't give creative control in their contracts anymore. Not since uh, racist Hulk Hogan <laughs> <laughs> in WCW ran that to the ground. All the way back around. Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Game-A-Thon for Youth Arts Programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium or join us live. ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference too and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B-A, B-A, start. Go check out that. So much more. So many new shows coming up, and then hopefully a couple more on the way. Actually, uh, some some interesting client work going on, and uh, of course, uh, 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 Power Hour with uh, uh, Will that was joining us last week. Who was uh, there uh, sitting on the couch? If you're on the video version uh, for those clips. So now we come back for the break and get to the awesome thing of the week because I have a feeling how this is going to go. Uh, so John Chichilla. What is your awesome thing of the so week? So my awesome thing of the week is the Microsoft Surface Three. What? Um, so I have the I I I know I sit here every week with the the glowing Apple logo um, <laughs> that, that beams proudly, its way proudly and into your hearts and minds, shining through the semi transparency <laughs> of, of his of his title. It's actually not right now. Yeah. You're, you're a little off camera, but uh, it, well, and it's it's because the the oh, oh, the oh, MacBook see, see. is is being used as <laughs> wait, a, wait 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 as so a you're table. Using, you're using the MacBook because you can't put the damn surface on your lap. First of all, that's well, the, actually, that's no, it is. It is lappable. The the new. So for me, and I know other people have said otherwise. Wow. For me, I can get away completely with with lapping the the Surface Three, and I would guess the Surface Pro Three. Um, one of the things, and I, I'm I'm a Surface RT Gen One owner. I'm a Surface early adopter. Surface Pro Gen One owner, um, and and I I really 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 did not like the aspect ratio of the screen. Um, being a sixteen by nine screen was just odd and awkward. Okay, and that's one thing. So so think about think about using your Nexus Seven tablet right in landscape all the time yeah that's what yeah, it was odd. like well use. i tell you what i got a super 16.9 on on this uh, asus over here and and we were talking about uh you know uh, logging in and just bringing up your mac stuff and then it's touch screen right mm-hmm. uh, yeah but you look at the ratio of the macbook pro versus this and you just feel like you're losing so much off of that mm-hmm. like like the, the the mac isn't completely 16.9 you got a little more space on the top and bottom and you kind of want that right right well and, and that's where i think they really took the theory behind the ipad and they took that that 
eight by ten piece of paper I concept. Mm -hmm. And the way they the way they develop the back hinge with the it has the um, normal tilt, the uh, mid tilt, and then all the way tilted. Um, it actually works pretty well if you're trying to show someone something on your desk and, and kind of set up for a, a different tilt. Um, that being said, when the keyboard flips around, um, you now have a device that's much more like an iPad in, in the aspect ratio, but you can go back to that tablet type form factor. And hopefully I don't drop it on your floor. For those on the video, I'm showing it. Um, up on the screen. It looks like but a laptop. Like, it, like, it, like feels, a it looks and feels like a laptop. Yeah. And, and, and the biggest thing is that aspect ratio on a screen. The other big thing for this is, and I put it, put a link out um, to Microsoft site, the price starts at 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. So you're not talking a thousand dollars. You're not talking $1,200, whatever. Now I will say the $500 gets you the tablet. It gets you the slate and that's about it. Um, it does not get you the keyboard. It doesn't get you the pen, pen, um, but it, it does get you the device itself. The storage comes 64 gig, 128 gig. You can get in two gig and four gig models. Um, the reason the price point's low is because of the Atom processor, mm -hmm. but it's their X7. It's their seventh generation, I guess, of Atom processor, which I will say is pretty darn snappy. Um, comes full size uh, USB three. You get a year of Office 365. Um, the other thing that I really like, and they they actually borrowed this from the original RT, is the micro SD card slot is behind the kickstand, so it's in here and all nice and hidden. The other thing that I I can't I can't explain how much I love is the power adapter is USB micro usb not even it's not usb c mm -hmm. it's but it's micro so any, pretty much anything that you have that can charge something will pretty much charge it um old phone phone so, cords like any so it's not even like um like how like i have trouble because i can't plug my ipad into everything right right like it, it's, it's not like that over amperaged it's, version no the one thing i did did notice today was though depending if you have a very generic charger um it'll say plugged in not charging unless you turn off the the screen mm -hmm. um but i actually had an ipad small brick laying on my desk at work that i just grabbed a micro usb cord and that and plugged it in and it started and charging up go. right away the other thing is is I, and it's been running here on this show and i did not have it 100 percent charged when i got here but it's still sitting at 84 percent and i have one two three four five six seven chrome tabs open Ooh, <laughs> that's the test right there <laughs> so there was something, so something i was reading where they're like yeah uh don't run your macbook with chrome if you want battery life <laughs> yeah which is true it's completely true absolutely but uh, you, you you make those decisions, right? Yeah. So and in the pen, the pen's pretty cool. Um, I haven't played with the pen a lot. I'm actually waiting to upgrade this to Windows 10. Mm -hmm. Um, because one of the things I'm looking forward is with the Edge browser, being able to annotate websites real quick and dirty. Um, I do have Sketch on here, and I have used it with Sketch. It works great in Sketch. Um, I'm not a huge OneNote user, but it does. From from my limited OneNote testing, because I can't use OneNote for work um, through my personal device here. So, but but the one thing I will say is, and and Windows is definitely getting this right. If you have any Windows machine and you associate it with your Microsoft account, mm -hmm. and then you go over to your other Windows machine and associate it, and then go into the App Store. Like everything comes down, your photos sync automatically, your background automatically. It's kind of almost yeah. spooky. But that's Android's been doing this it, for how long? Android's been doing it for how long? But it's something I wasn't ready for Microsoft to do for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> what Microsoft did it? That, that what commonality? What? Yeah, and, what? It, it, and it's it's it makes moving between devices so nice. Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, and, and we've been experiencing this for a while, haven't we? With Macs, with a lot of other right. other things, you know, with Android, with iPhones, and, and and it seems like they're well with Windows eight. They, they certainly have been doing it, but they still seem like they were the last of the party and we don't expect it to work. And with, with Windows 8, it was a little bit clunky. Like yeah. it would take an extremely long time for the simplest of things to happen, like your background to set up. Yeah. But your OneDrive would would sink down and and overfill your device if you didn't have enough space. Like it, there, was, there was there was a lot of things that they didn't fully think through mm -hmm. um, where I think 8.1 did a lot of bug fixing for that kind of stuff. And 10 is going to take it definitely to the next level. Oh, certainly. I did load 10 last night. I've been part of the 10 insiders um, program for quite some time. And I did load 10 on the surface last night, which again was such an easy feat, right? I went, gra grabbed the ISO, copied it to an SD card, ran the setup. Or I wiped the device first, ran the setup and boom, it was done. And that's the one thing that's interesting, too, about the, the Microsoft Surface devices. And I'm guessing more and more manufacturers are doing this. The product key is embedded in the EFI mm -hmm. boot. Now, and I, I, was listening, I, I always listen to Windows Weekly whenever something significant like this happens. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, they said... Uh, mo so, so I'm confused a little bit here because now... I was listening to one thing where they said, uh, depending on your device, if you got the thing with like Windows 8, Windows 8.1, you're going to have to re reinstall it from like Windows 8, whatever came on that machine, right? But then I was reading something where they said, no, when you upgrade to that mm -hmm. Windows 10, it will upgrade that code in the BIOS. Yes. Now, it, so, so That's basically, what I saw happen. so basically Windows doesn't belong to you. Windows belongs to that device correct which is interesting and if it works if it works sure you know well, and I, I'm, I'm waiting for that time where it disagrees so this is so and then what the the device i had the surface came with eight mm -hmm. i upgraded it to eight one i was part of the preview program for that so i had to restore back to eight yeah and i just hit the restore button and said Re restore to factory default boom it went back auto setup Mm -hmm. brought all my stuff back from down from OneDrive, went to 8.1, went from 8.1 to 10 Preview. 10 Preview actually replaced the restore partition. It did? Yes. Oh, okay. So the Preview, I couldn't restore back to 8. Interesting. Um, so what I did was is I said restore to factory. It restored it to the latest Insider Preview that I had. Yeah. Then I went to Microsoft's <laughs> website where you can get the 10 ISO to skip the waiting in line type thing. Mm -hmm. I downloaded that, copied it to so, an SD so, card, and ran the install. So we're at this point where if you have a computer that has been upgraded to 10, so it's been at some point. So now it says, okay, this is a 10 device. We're good to go. You can just grab that ISO at any point and just restore. As So, and I don't think it's the, I don't think the OS version, um, is the issue it's the efi uefi boot mm -hmm. capability this is something on a chip in your computer so right that it's a it's one of the things that actually made your if your device has a made for windows 8 sticker on it mm -hmm. i think it has to have that right because right. um, because at a certain point they don't have key codes like on the bottom of the laptop right which is good since it rubbed off of the windows 7 laptop and i can't put windows 7 on it anymore yeah uh, so that's an issue. Um, I wish this, I wish this upgrade would have happened in the meantime. <laughs> so it's, it's a firm. It's a, it's a type of firmware instead of using an actual the old BIOS, right, the traditional right. BIOS. Which again, awesome until that doesn't work. And then yes. what do you do? You know, how do well, I? Here, here's what I, here's what I would guess you would do. I would guess you would call Microsoft, tell them. And I've seen I've heard of more people than you would think would call Microsoft and say. I need. I lost my product key, or my product key rubbed off the bottom of my device. Here's oh. the device. Here's the serial number, and they will issue a new product key. Really? So account. I should probably do that and see if I can get the Windows Seven back. Yeah. You now, well, yeah I, I've actually done that twice. Yeah. Uh, my father had a laptop. The same thing happened. Rubbed off the bottom. Uh, it was literally no problem. It was. It was a really nice experience to get a new product key. Because I we've done the thing where where we had to. What were we doing? We're, we're 
the um, genuine advantage thing didn't work with like Windows XP and you call in and get this automated code that you have to punch in. Mm -hmm. Like that I've done before. Yeah, and I've heard, so because starting in Windows 7, they started using a, some kind of algorithm. Right, the, the thing where they're for assessing. hardware change. Yeah, they, they're assessing like your chip. Actually, they've been doing that since Genuine Advantage and XP. So okay. Po supposedly. <laughs> but I don't think they'd ever forced you to retype in a key. I, I don't know because I had a professional key that was unlimited. It's so. right, 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 right. It, it depends on the key, and, and at a certain point, the keys like I because I, I have I have two copies of Windows XP Media Center that are OEMs, and you're only supposed to be able to use those once. And at a certain point, they're like, "Meh, it's all right." You know, I'm there's there's the Windows XPs on here. Unless I there was a, a code on the box itself for me to use, I just use that code. Mm -hmm. and it's it's been working and i've been using that for years you know um i have not had that luck with windows 7 no 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 no. i don't think that yeah I, don't, I think they're a little more stringent on that yeah. but but hey now it's free so whatever, and they, they right? can't the, the weird thing and i don't know how they're doing it is if you have a v if you clone a virtual machine mm -hmm. if you make a copy of a virtual machine and boot it up it'll actually come up and say this this device was not there it, it comes up and says this device is not using an authentic key. It doesn't it, disable the first one. Yeah, yeah. But whatever it does, however it knows, mm -hmm. when when you clone the the VM, and AJ it, would probably know best. But it's doing something like it can't see that 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 chip, that yeah. the boot chip or something like that. So okay. Other than that, um, and I'm still wondering. I, I, I so I, I got at the last minute. I got the ISOs, and then then they ran out and weren't offering the technical preview. I found a key code. I I'm, I want to try to throw the technical preview on a couple older computers here, or maybe maybe in in, in a boot camp or something on my Mac. And I'm hoping that that will still slide me into the technical preview Windows 10 official kind of thing. Uh, so, but I do have it on my Asus laptop. Uh, it's running. It's it's running real good actually. Um, I think I set this up over here. Let me double check and so we can show it off a little bit. But um, it's running great, man. It's running tremendous. Uh, I've been so I've been so impressed through the Insider program with with all of the. <laughs> They really bridged the gap between seven and eight with the, you know, you can kind of have your start button in tablet mode. You can have it in desktop mode. Mm -hmm. to, and that's what I was playing with happy. a little bit. So I like the changes to the start menu. Uh, they basically just kind of put all that giant full page start menu in here, uh, rearranged everything, put their stuff in front of all my stuff. But again, you just kind of, uh, I love this. You just slide everything up and it's a little less responsive, but uh with this laptop, but it works really well. Um, so we have that. And I noticed like you can offset things. Like n everything's not square. And I realized I didn't do this. Hold on. Now you'll see what I'm doing. There it is. Um, so so like like this. Like I accidentally put this flipboard here. You can put things like like a weird staggered thing wherever you want. That's so because the, you can put other small icons in that empty like space. Like even smaller than this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Like so like it's good. I think it's good for like music. Mm hmm. Like the music and, app. Yeah, like we talk about. So I put, I, I, this is the laptop I took with me to the gathering. And uh, this is, I loaded all my photos on it so I could like throw it up on Google Drive in the hotel, which was going to be slower, uh, and, and go back to the concert and take more photos. So, so I have a little bit of, you know, the pictures kind of sliding through here as it goes. You know, our new, news flips with the other content, which is really, really kind of cool. Um, and again, it's not so overbearing. Uh, I like that everything's uh, kind of searchable in here. So if I wanted to, uh oh, what I do, I hope and get started somehow. But it, it's nice. It's it's more familiar again. And 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 uh, again, like the apps, like photos and everything, you know, they're not full screen. But like some of those gestures that you learned the last time, I apparently accidentally opened a bunch of apps over here. So uh, played a little bit with the Xbox stuff, which really is just kind of going into your account. I don't have an Xbox One, and I, I, I don't think it's even. Um, available quite yet that you can do the streaming. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make everyone upset. Did you set up Hey Cortana? Do, do I have to set anything up? Or I mean, it's there. I can. So say, you uh, have to tell her to to respond. Okay. So what do I? Oh, the actual Hey Cortana. Yeah. Uh, and then thing. you just did it again. You just everyone's machine. Everyone's new Windows. 10 I didn't know it's a thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> so what? So how do I set that up? I think you tap on her. Okay. So. And there's a setting, and I don't have a Windows 10 machine in front of me. So actually, and I, I like so they they have this like kind of Google Now card thing. 
So I picked a few yes. starter interests, so you ha have a bit of this. Again, you'll have more if you use more Windows services. So I think that's a little bit of a hang up uh, right, off the, right off the bat here. But you can go in here and I think it does, let's see, it'll go in. So if you go into, um, there's like a settings panel for Cortana and there's a home and then a little book and a, right. and a go under the little book. The notebook? And then let Cortana. No, it's like for using Cortana, there's a settings oh, panel. Oh, hey Cortana. There it there is. is. There. So to I'm anyone, sure to your hey voice. Cortana, look for awesome cast. Um, awesome gas, okay. <laughs> and I'll pull up, uh, and I did change the default, so it does pull up Chrome instead of Microsoft Edge. And it pulled up a, uh, a, a well, actually, a Bing search. Of so course. there's my one there's for your, the day. One for the, make sure you register, though. You got to register. Oh, I got to so make sure so I'm logged into points. my. No, I'm, I'm, I, uh, well, I registered for the Bing Rewards a while ago, and it, it is showing my Microsoft account in the corner. Oh, so because okay. I logged in on Xbox.com to go get my games <laughs> for gold a couple a little bit ago. Uh, so so oh, that's cool. Hey, Cortana. Does it do it any time? supposed to hey cortana is it is it it's an always it's ubiquitous listening it yes. is it is just like the other thing um so and yeah, you can actually going. set it it'll actually learn your voice mm -hmm. so you can actually set it to respond to anyone or just to respond to you <laughs> yeah i saw the i saw the notices in there and, and it actually did pick up on kind of both of us so um so it, what's something i should ask something general like hey cortana what's the weather, what's the like? weather tomorrow hey cortana what's the weather like tomorrow Well, there you go. I mean, as much as anything else, but if I'm sitting on the laptop, that's that's going to be handy, right? And if you if you use like the you sync the native calendar or email apps with like mm -hmm. your your Gmail, you can say what's on my schedule, what's the status of my flight. Interesting. You can ask her how long it'll take to get to insert yeah. place. So here. when's Siri going to get on my computer? On my MacBook. That's where I'm there. That's what's missing. Because yeah. as it is, you already have, because I can go in here. I mean, I, I on any computer I have, I have Google now. Because I can go to Google.com and say, okay, Google, search for the weather in Pittsburgh. But she doesn't talk to you. Uh, she can, actually. Oh, there it is. She is. There it is. Um, so, so, so now I have this mix of I will always have Cortana, Google Now, and Siri at my disposal. <laughs> See, now, now all you need now is the, you, you need the Amazon Echo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Alexis. It's all set. How? What, but, what? At what point can I get the Google Now and the Cortana on the same computer to talk to each other? You know somebody's working on that. Uh, I'm sure there's someone already figuring out a, a way to get to to, to get the the word, them to respond in certain ways so they do carry on that conversation. Right, right, it's right. like where the guy did you see the, the where the guy called the two Chinese delivery places and and had them order had the two different people or like met, the way the the way the first person repeated back the order, mm -hmm. the second person thought they were that was the order they were ordering. Mm -hmm. And it was like this huge back and forth. And all as it was, was a phone bridge to two different two to two different delivery places. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure I'm sure someone's working on some kind of kickstart dialogue the video the video is going to be go. and plus I, I feel like well i guess hey cortana i was going to say maybe it's more hackable because it's in windows but it's it's really like you are you are calling onto a server just like anyway any, anything else mm -hmm. um it, it's not on your computer and there's actually an interesting thing in the eula that's been kind of uh worked over the last few you know a little bit ago uh that that says oh by the way all your personal stuff is going to go to microsoft which is you have to do in order for anything like this to work so again how much <laughs> Here's my dream with the, with the Cortana. We were talking before about the Xbox One and uh, even next gen consoles. About will it eventually have Windows 10 on there? I would love to be able to just be sitting in my living room with the, with the Xbox One running and be able to say, "Hey Cortana, what's the weather?" And have mm -hmm. the TV tell me what the weather's going to be. So, so she'll tell you. She'll the, 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 I think you can do. What time is it right now? 
So I'm guessing that's we're not far off from that. Cause, no, no, no. Because uh, no, no, no. I already do. Um, oh, what's the Xbox one? It's not Hey Xbox. Is, is it OK? No, it's OK, Google. It's just <laughs> Xbox. That's what it is. So I'll say Xbox go to Vivo. And it, that brings up. I'm sorry, everybody with all these things. You know, there's somebody else out there with all four of these things that just keeps going off as they're listening to this in their living room. And the, the interesting thing that Xbox implemented on on their, I'm guessing it's in their SDK, mm-hmm. was that when you when you do vo- voice control, all the apps have built in capability. So like the Vivo app, the Vivo app. It has it'll highlight anything in green on the app that's a keyword that you can say. Oh. And for menus that are like the music videos where yeah. where it actually just ranks them in order of like the most popular video, like the top twenty or whatever, it actually overlays a green number on them. So you just say play one or play seven mm-hmm. or play whatever. Um and you can say go to next track and, and all that kind of stuff. And it that's where I feel like not only did they do a really good job of, of letting you do voice control at the OS level, they enabled all of the app, the people making the apps to, to carry that forward into their app. So you can completely control the app through voice control. Mm-hmm. And, and you have obviously their built in one guide and all kinds of other stuff. But and, and the one guide now can interface with like shows on Netflix and, and, uh, and things of that nature. So so to your, to your point of of asking the Xbox, what time is it in California or what's the current temperature? I, I don't think we're we're more than six to eight months away from that. I think we're probably a I, year away from office running on it, but mm hmm. I really love the future that we're living in right now. <laughs> and that's where like what what I'm interested in is when you get into the 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 Skype for business and and those types of features where you have a system in your living room and someone calls you and you get a little pop up almost like the Comcast boxes do where if you have your phone line running through it it says incoming call from but now you can say xbox take that call it should pause the game <laughs> and so you're it's all handing off and dealing it, with right that. it's wow. all it's all taking care of that and that's the one that's the one thing that i think the mac's done extremely well with mm-hmm. i can't tell you how many times i order a pizza from slice on broadway <clears throat> from <Slice on> broadway.com <laughs> from my wi-fi only ipad <laughs> because you know even like every time i order <laughs> here for tuesday night it's uh i go hey siri call slice on broadway oh crap it's plugged in <laughs> uh but uh uh yeah I, I yeah completely it like and i don't make a lot of phone calls but that's the one call i make every week and boom you but know? i make it i make it through the ipad which uh-huh. i don't i have a wi-fi only ipad but it's doing a handoff yeah of the fo- it's taking the f- the phone call from the phone, but it's actually piping it. Well, and that's iPad. something. Isn't that something that they're talking about? <laughs> Unfortunately, nobody has a Windows phone that this works um, because aren't they supposed to have a little bit of a, a is, is it called consistency or something like that? They have continuum. Continuum. That's, that's their concept of when you take the, the tablet and you fold this behind. Oh, it becomes the tablet. It, be, it puts the ta- it puts the UI in tablet mode. So okay. you go back to like this. Mm-hmm. when you when you don't have a well and you can turn it on or off yeah yeah i was playing with that but, okay can i on a side note i love the toggles like this is one of those this feels very android to me and i love this i love just having a button like there's a tablet yes. mode here um and and it'll pop in now hit, i hit the start button and i get the old windows 8 tablet interface which works here because but but the nice thing is that has disappeared for all the people that don't have touch screens, because right. that's the thing that always drew me insane about this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or even like I come down here, I turn off the Wi-Fi so I can plug this in so we can do the screen sharing better. Uh, and it's just a button, which is like when 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 uh, iOS turned into that thing that flips up and it's just all the toggles for like Wi-Fi and, and airplane mode and everything was the best thing ever for me because how many times am i like okay this wi-fi doesn't work i'm on a weird coffee shop one and everybody else is downloading off a google drive or something right Uh, Mm -hmm. i need to cut off that so i can actually use my phone for 
all the non-phone things, right? But but that it's here, and even, I don't know, I don't really use, I mean, this is really, it's a more functional version of the notification center that, that we're familiar with on the Mac OS. Yes. To a certain point. We even have an airplane mode. We have your, it's sh it's showing that it's sharing my location. How many people are thinking about their laptop sharing their location? Now they know it's in front of their face. You got a VPN thing. You got a connect thing. You got notes. It's all right there. And even this kind of action centery thing, because this is all stuff. This is all just reminders because I, I don't know. My iPad like never stays. So it keeps like disconnecting and reconnecting over and over again for some reason. Um, or, you know, you know, stuff like that. I can see what's going on. I love that, the, you know, there is this security and maintenance thing. And it's not hidden down in the bottom anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it's more visual. It's more in my face. And and, and I, I'm hoping normal people will attend to that. And, and I, I'm really glad that it's also the swipe from the right, which is where the charms bar used to be, is still a function and actually more functional mm -hmm. than it used to be. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can't up talk the, the new OS enough. God, guys, guys, Windows is awesome. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's I mean, it, it's there. They're, it's. It's night and day. I mean, we had XP, which was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we had Vista, which was meh. And then seven, seven kind of brought that back. Eight kind yeah, of. When the, I mean, I mean, bridge. XP the, wasn't exciting, and that's where I think they lost a lot of ground to Mac OS. Yeah, too. This is, and this to me is exciting. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it certainly is. And not to mention that, and, and uh, Wheels is in the chat room. He's upgraded his devices to to this, and uh, he's in there saying that. Uh, uh, the Chromecast even seems really uh, much better with his laptop. Uh, everything's uh, seems smoother on, on both laptops that he has. Uh, you know, my Asus over here, it's been like moderately usable. It's like a four gigabyte RAM uh, uh, i5 processor. So it's really been clunky for me, right? Especially mm -hmm. using Chrome. You're doing it like maybe I open TweetDeck and the, I, I open three, four tabs on chrome and i'm at a crawl it has been so much snappier it i still get a slowdown from time to time but i've been i this is the computer that i take to the coffee shop to do social media and just like general email answering like non-video work basically while my macbook's sitting at home rendering a project right and it's i've been doing that more and more in the last week and not even batting an eye at it because even social media wise it would slow me down to sit there in Hootsuite and do my scheduling and everything because it wasn't keeping up. Now, did you, is there, and this is where I'm trying to gain more knowledge in what's out there and what's not out there. Mm -hmm. So you're doing all kinds of stuff like Hootsuite and, and WordPress and, and whatever. Right. right. You're just using your browser or are you using? Chrome. So, okay. So, and that's where I'm wondering, like, because now you have a Twitter, because don't forget you have the whole app store. Right. So there's the Twitter app. There's there's a lot of those things that have become apps. I have done apps. so little in the app store. To and be that's quite where honest. that's where I think we're gonna where the next where where you need to start looking mm -hmm. to to make the experience even better, right? Because you're we're talking about everything's new and fresh and looks good. It's gonna look even better in its own dedicated app versus the browser. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think for, for a common user, that's going to be one of the biggest things to overcome is using Windows and apps together rather than an application mm -hmm. or right. going to some place on a web page. For me, it never seems like, you know, with a window, with a you know Windows 10 computer here, that I would ever go to uh, the app store to get an app on a computer. That is something right. I think a lot of people are going to have to adapt to. And I think they have, uh, obviously, you know, Mac OS, I think they have, but I think, I think it's a different mindset. It certainly is. And also just thinking like, hey, Windows does this thing, like, like you said, with the, with the carryover with our accounts and everything, right? And there's going to be a little bit of a re-education for that. But it's a re-education that's going to make things easier. Right. In the long run. So that's really exciting. Um, and also, like, I remember going into the App Store on Windows 8 and it just seems so trashy. Like, there's not good stuff in there. I, I was looking mm -hmm. for a DVD player for somebody. I was like, oh, go to the App Store and find something. And I didn't find anything that seemed Grab worthwhile. Grab VLC. VLCs in the App Store. VLC will make let you run DVDs? I'm pretty sure. Because here's my... Pro I'll talk to you off air about this issue we were having. Somebody installed Windows, and they even upgraded to 10. And, you know, you don't get the DVD player thing. So it's going to give you that codec with think VLC. It, it because then Handbrake didn't work. Because it didn't have a codec. That's what I need is a codec. I don't need a player. I need a codec. 
I would try VLC from the App Store, and if that doesn't work, I would actually go out to their website and grab the full. All right, I want to send somebody a new email. Try, uh, try it. I, 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 I'm not guaranteeing it, but mm-hmm, it should mm-hmm. be. I found something that was a free DVD player, and I didn't see any hooks. Like It looks like they were giving away the DVD player because they want you to buy their DVD ripper. Okay. Well, so it was a uh, WinX DVD player, I think it was mm-hmm. called. I don't know if anybody else has heard of it. If anybody uses it, knows it's good, let me know. Um, so, uh, hey, okay. So, uh, oh, what do we got? It's uh, 7.56. We got to talk video games. Chris, you got to get out of here. It's yeah, passing. I got to go, guys. It's Thank you very bad. much for having me. Well, and uh, come, come talk back to you guys soon. soon. All right. At Pantster on the Twitters. Say what up to him. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Chris, for joining us. <laughs> Hey, bye-bye, guys. Later. All right. And we do have to get out in a moment. But uh, anything else on uh, Windows-wise? We, we do have some comments from the chat room I wanted to get to real quick. Uh, Alex Carr is out in California. He's saying, uh, looks cool, though. Uh, RIP Internet Explorer and good riddance. I, I've spent a tiny bit of time in the new Edge browser. It's a web browser. I guess it doesn't have any plugins yet. And Internet Explorer is still in Windows 10. Mm-hmm. It's just not the default anymore. So if you need it, it's still there. I think for a, for a tablet user, if you want to, if you're trying to say, hey, on, on this website, look at what this person did and you want to draw something. That's right. It has the drawing capabilities. So it has all the built-in drawing capabilities. I think that's going to be the reason to open that browser mm-hmm. um, and may push some people there. Um, other than that, I mean, it's it's Microsoft's browser. I mean, I... You're likely using something else anyways. Pe- uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cause an up- uprising. I wish Apple still made Safari for Windows. Oh, I didn't <laughs> know they stopped. Yeah, they stopped. Interesting. They stopped like two or three years ago. Oh, well, don't um, wear that. Yeah, and that's where... So in the, in the, for, the, for the simple reason and the only reason that I feel like iOS and Mac and Safari, their bookmark system mm-hmm. and synchronization is beyond brilliant um the one thing that may actually drive me back there is if i load if you load itunes and the icloud plugins you can tell icloud to sync your safari bookmarks from a mac or an ios device into explorer chrome or firefox on windows which you don't have that capability on a mac Mm -hmm. um you know, the weird thing, I'm, I'm just kind of poking through this here, and it's just like, I'm, I'm looking through the store, and it's really like, should I just like go ahead and install all the stuff I'm using on my phone, just to kind of, as a comparison point? Uh, so I would for that reason. Like, just to, just to be like, okay, I can do it on my phone, I can definitely do it here as well. And actually, some of these I've already installed, it looks like I did that a while ago and forgot about it. <laughs> Yeah, but so, uh, but I mean, just like it, it doesn't really stick out. I guess it, I mean, there's some paid games in here, so you do have like the Halo Spartan Strike. You have uh, has like these are lower end games. Like actually, even the games they have on here are things from my iPhone, like San Andreas. I think it was on San Andreas, but the, but the other uh, old GTA games are on here. Minecraft. I'm really considering. Well, this is interesting. Ten bucks for Minecraft. It's a Windows 10 edition beta, so that's kind of curious as yeah, well. So this is the freemium Star Wars game Commander. I mean, it's just like they're not selling full Xbox games like this isn't a Steam competitor in their store. And I feel like that's something missing. I can buy full fledged games in a Mac, o- Mac, the Mac App Store, for instance. And that's where I think that's that's the, this is their first to me. They're oh, man. My little pony friendship is madness. Magic. <laughs> I am in going going past what they had in Windows 8, which to me was half horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, l- let's get let's get the real apps working before we try to go crazy about the games. I, I feel like was, so if you're going to if you're going to say that the, games the, the are already Xbox di- one, the Xbox one is the gaming computer or the uh-huh. gaming device. And the, then the Windows 10 laptop desktop is the production device. Right. Until you get the Xbox one running Windows 10. I don't think you can blame them for not having I got Windows though. 10, but now all the Xbox games in the Windows but 10. But now store. you also have well, one these are Xbox compatible. So I'm I'm seeing titles here that I'm I'm familiar with. Like I'm looking at Modern Combat, which is kind of their Call of Duty kind of ripoff game, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a free one here. Um, <laughs> the products you can buy through this app range from 13.99 to 99.99. Holy crap! Uh, but still, I, I mean, it, it, it's still like. 
So here's where I would start. I would start with your Evernote. Okay. Let's start with Evernote Flipboard. Flipboard already uh, on there as a default. It looked like Fresh Paint. Fresh Paint. What's Fresh yeah, Paint? Fresh Paint's like a very cool, like little art studio. Okay. Paint, paintbrush pencil type thing. Okay. Okay. The, the Kindle app. Netflix. Again, Netflix. I already had. Uh, oh, oh, that's Fresh Paint. I think that was on here already. Looks like it might be. Sketch OneNote. Okay. Okay. Um. I'm a big fan of the CW app. Oh yeah, well they they have, they have uh, episodes in there. Yeah. So we got what's Sketch Touch? It's kind of a drawing. It's app. Sketch. Yeah, it's Sketch like you would have on your phone. The CW. You gotta catch up on that Supernatural. I'm up to season eight, by the way. You got your Smart Glass apps. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, the Smart Glass. So I can do my uh. And so that that's the thing I miss doing Game of Thrones is using Smart Glass. Yep. Does that work? Um, does Windows 10 Smart Glass work with 360, or is that you have? There's a 360 Smart Glass and then a One Smart Glass. Okay, yeah, you have okay. both. But uh, but either way, it's interesting. It's bringing new life to it. I I don't see much reason not to upgrade in general. There hasn't been seen many big glitches. If you only have one computer and and something goes horribly wrong, it always can. Make sure you backed everything up. Make sure it's in a OneDrive, Google Drive, whatever the case may be. Uh, or backed up off your computer. What you know, just just make sure you have taken precautions in case you do have to reinstall everything on that computer. Um, but uh, it, it's free. It's recommended if you have Windows Seven or Eight, I think. And there are other ways you can get it too, uh, and a free or just go buy the thing. You know, if you have if you're building a new computer, I think it's worthwhile. It, this brings so much new life to Windows machines. I wish I could throw. There's actually like like if there's any functional purpose i'd also be throwing it on my studio computer but that's just asking for trouble i wish i could put it on these older computers because i think it would run okay to be quite honest so i don't know we'll see uh any last thoughts on that before we get out of here no last thoughts on that again you, you'll have more as as you go because you're just getting into yeah, there's there's some stuff i've been looking at the, how to change the login image mm -hmm. um basic how what you can ask cortana um I'm sure this is going to be one of those things where we'll talk about for quite some time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So uh, it looks like Microsoft, big, big, big victory here this past week with this. Um, and I definitely recommend it. And I, I'm, I've gone back to, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just loosening my grip on Mac supremacy at this point or what, what. But I'm very, I don't know. I'm really into this. I'm really into using this laptop, you know. And uh, I may just have to always kind of have a Windows laptop on hand as well, just to just to just as a as a work laptop. I well, yeah, what does it hurt? Yeah, yeah, certainly, and something I can play my games on. <laughs> mm -hmm. That giant giant stack of games I paid nothing for on Steam that I still need to play through. Uh, I get to get to that Arkham Origins here, because um, apparently Arkham Knights. It'll be a while before I play that one. All right, speaking of video games, we're going to get off the line. If you're joining us live, stay tuned for a boss battle with InsertCoinToBegin.com. So some great articles going on over there. Uh, please go to SorgatronMedia.com. we got a lot of fun stuff, including some videos from my trip to the Gathering of the Juggalos 2015. We're talking about feminism amongst Juggalos. It's real. Also, I enjoy fire and talk to a Juggalo brony. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of exploring the culture here with this app that I just downloaded on the on the uh, on the I almost call my here's the other problem. I'm calling this an Xbox, <laughs> this laptop, my Xbox laptop. But soon it's just going to be a Windows device. I mean, the the phone's going to run Windows 10. Yeah. Yeah. And in theory, you'll be able to hook it up to a big monitor, keyboard and mouse. So that's that's finally that promise. Right. So, I mean, these are all the things that Bill Gates wanted to do 15 years ago, but they can never pull it together. Sacha mania, baby. Chachi <laughs> plays is coming up. Thank you, chat room, for letting me know about that. Um, and you see behind me, PodCamp Pittsburgh happening in two weeks. We'll be doing a live awesome cast that Sunday. I believe the time is 2 o'clock in room C. So please join us. PodCampPittsburgh.com. So much info on there. All of the uh, all of the, 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 the 
all of the sessions are up and, and there's a couple more going to be filled in here. I got an email from somebody very exciting that's going to be coming in. Uh, so, and Chachi Plays, Chachi Plays, Chachi Plays, ChachiPlays.com. We'll be streaming all weekend long from the Toonsium in downtown Pittsburgh. Please go uh, to go donate. There are slots open if you want to come down and play with Chachi. And also I put out on the Twitters on Chachi Plays, if you are going, coming down to play with Chachi or in a tournament for the Tetris or Mario Kart, I want your trash talk at Chachi Plays. Do it on Twitter video do it in text however you want to do it i want to hear you trash talking video games with us at chachi plays it's for the kids uh chilla is at chilla on the twitters john chill on the facebook mm-hmm. i'm at sorgatron at panster for chris Mumberger. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and uh, uh thank you all of you thank you for our, our live chat room live.awesomecast.net thank you our patrons thank you you have been our awesome audience have an awesome week at Trashy Plays. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.